offering of the Holy Mass. Accept most holy trinity, this sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the divine word, and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intent priest and victim that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the Church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, And she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to thy word. The Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are you, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour, Pour forth, we beseech. Your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message made by His passion and cross, glory of His resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son, Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration, streaming live from the Sanctuary of St. Paul the Apostle. The priests and brothers of the Society of St. Paul offer this Mass for all your intentions. Pope Francis, the good health of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, the intentions of our Superior General, Father Valdir Jose de Castro, SSP, all doctors and nurses, health workers, medical practitioners, and all frontliners who are fighting COVID-19. All intentions offered through the Sambuhay TV Mass, St. Paul Mass Association. Special intentions of Francis Den Esteban, Jose Jr. and Marieta Osmeña and family, Anna Delaine Acosta, Cynthia Flores, Jose Lin Inot, family, Garcia family, Al, Jeb Passion, Charlie Pops Bunog Libres, Joshua Andrino, Mariel Arbo. Bonieda, Donna Rose Delalgo, George Vargas, Jane Pauline, and Carl Martin Damual, Jan Dexter Certivit, Juliet Donacao, Gemma Gomez, and for Thanksgiving of John and Ro Umbao and family, 
to Clara Agnes, Oliver, and Fernandez and family, and family, Lorizel, Kadatal, and family, JV and Christine Borja and family. For the wedding anniversary of Hans, Benedict, and Maria Eva. For the good health of Daniel, Andrian, Acosta, Santos, Jimmy, Enot, and family, Gio, Liam, Alcantara, Ponzo, and Lady Lim, Saling, Umbau, Mil Passion, and Catalan families, Sin, and family, Leonila Tabar, Judith Sorniano Figues, Lian Grace, Arlina, and Gomez, Arturo S., Maria Leticia, G. Reina, Maria Luisa, Maria Eddie Chun, Gayang Kamatig. For the healing and recovery of Anne Kathleen Acosta, Francesco Baldo Arsenio, Lutgarda Escandor, Rosalinda de Jesus, Armando and Nino Sabel, Sagani Sincha, Gian Andres Serva, Jovelin Domingo, Amparo Hox, Melina Gamir, Virgin, Christina and Maylin Mill, Fortuna, Fortuna, Junior, Merli B. Moga, Alfred Luis G. Reina, Freddy Javier, Lorely Quintana Gomez, Juanito Borja, Gina Serrano, Karen Kapal, Casmir Estonil, Estonilo, Daisy Reyes. For the repose of the soul of Rufina Francia, Antolin, Ovid Jr., Ambrosio Ninabili, and Antonio Guzman. Joel Z. Parcon, Augusto S. Gedang Sr., Eduardo Guzman, Aida Reloj, Karen Pavico, Lorenzo Turla Jr., Teresita Tanglao Turla, Pascuala D.V., Paz Beleza, Florentina Calero, Angeles and Rudy Ruby, Gayang Kamari, Tinya and Milio Gapit. Maria Victoria Sapigao, Eduardo Guzman, Maria Ruiz, Rufina Fran, J. Andrea Gam Mapatid, Josefina S. Castaneda, Cecil N. Halares, Ireneo Kiskin Campos, Marcigres Tagenet, Miguel and Michelle Pilacarpio, Filomeno Leonor Victoria, Flora and June Tadena, Sriaco, Salvador and Armanda, Isabelita de Guzman, Liuliwa Albano, Maria Jane and Castro, Contrado and and all the souls in purgatory, especially those who have died because of COVID-19.
and the phone. Look to your covenant, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor ones forever. Arise, O God, and defend your cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. In this Mass, let us also pray for the birthday intention of, of Bernard Dofitan Jr. and the eternal repose of Don Daryl Doronila. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may marry to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders and their leaders, their judges and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, in times past, your fathers down to Terah, father of Abraham and Nahor, dwelt beyond the river and served other gods. But I brought your father Abraham from the region beyond the river and led him through the entire land of Canaan. I made his descendants numerous and gave him Isaac. To Isaac, I gave Jacob and Esau, to Esau, I assigned the mountain region of Seir in which to settle, while Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron and smote Egypt with the prodigies which I wrought in her midst. Afterward, I led you out of Egypt, and when you reached the sea, the Egyptians pursued your fathers to the Red Sea, with chariots and horsemen. Because they cried out to the Lord, he put darkness between your people and the Egyptians, upon whom he brought the sea, he brought the sea so that it engulfed them. After you witnessed what I did to Egypt and dwelt a long time in the desert, I brought you into the land of the Amorites, who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I delivered them into your power. You took possession of their land, and I destroyed them, the two kings of the Amorites before you. Then Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, prepared to war against Israel. He summoned Balaam, 
son of Beor, to curse you, but I would not listen to Balaam. On the contrary, he had to bless you, and I saved you from him. Once you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho, the men of Jericho fought against you, but I delivered them also into your power. And I sent the hornets ahead of you that drove them, the Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Girgashites, Hivites, and Jebusites out of your way. It was not your sword or your bow. I gave you a land that you had not tilled and cities that you had not built to dwell in. You have eaten of vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to God, to the God of gods, for His mercy endures forever. Give His thanks to the Lord of lords, for His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Who led His people through the wilderness, for His mercy endures forever. Who smote great kings, for His mercy endures forever. And slew powerful kings, for His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. And made their land a heritage, for His mercy endures forever. The heritage of Israel, His servant, for His mercy endures forever. And freed us from our foes, for His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Receive the word of God not as the word of men, but as it truly is, the word of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful and marries another, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If that is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. He answered, Not all can accept this word but only those to whom that is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so, some because they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. 
Ang ating pong mga ebanghelyo nitong mga nakaarang araw, kung inyo pong mapapansin, ay lahat tungkol sa relasyon. Lahat ay tungkol sa ugnayan. At kung paano ating pwedeng tugunan o resolbahin kung merong nangyayaring alitan o hindi pagkakaunawaan. Halimbawa, yung ating ebanghelyo noong Merkules, ang konteksto ng relasyon ay tungkol sa magkakapatid o sa magkapwa. Nire-resolve ang conflict o yung di pagkakaunawaan o alitan sa pamamagitan ng fraternal correction, yung pakikipagkasundo. Kahapon naman, Huwebes, ang konteksto ng relasyon ay sa magkakatrabaho. Pareho silang alipin do sa Ebanghelyo kahapon. At paano re-resolvahin ang conflict? Halimbawa sa conflict tungkol sa utang, sa pamamagitan ng awa at pagpapatawad. At sa araw naman pong ito, biyernes, ang ating Ebanghelyo, eh tungkol naman sa mag-asawa. Marami po sa inyo mga nanonood ngayon sa Sambuhay TV Mass uh, na sumusubaybay sa amin, makaka-relate kasi marami sa inyo ay may asawa. Ang konteksto ng relasyon ngayong umaga sa ating Ebanghelyo ay tungkol sa mag-asawa. At paano ba re-resolvahin kapag mayroong alitan sa mag-asawa? Yung iba naghihiwalay na lang bigla. At ang pinipresenta sa ating Ebanghelyo ng mga pariseyo na sumusubo kay Jesus ay ang diborsyo. Diborsyo. Kaya nga ang sagot ni Jesus sa mga sumusubok sa kanyang pariseyo kung bakit mayroong diborsyo, ito yung sagot niya. From the beginning, the Creator, ang manlilikha, made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. The two shall become one flesh. Sabihin natin, how romantic. Yung dalawa nagiging isang laman. One flesh. Sa ibang salin ito, sasabihin doon, isang katawan. Ang mag-asawa nagiging isang katawan. One body. Dito pumapasok yung turo ng simbahan tungkol sa indissolubility ng kasal. Ibig sabihin, what God has joined together, man must not separate. Yun yung turo sa atin ni Jesus. Sa Old English, man must not put asunder. Kung ano yung pinag-isa ng Diyos, hindi maaaring paghiwalayin ng tao. Pero kinontra ng mga pariseyo, sabi, eh Jesus, bakit si Moises, doon sa kanyang batas, nagkaroon ng diborsyo, pwede maghain ng bill of divorce? Ang sagot ni Jesus dyan, kasi nagkaroon ng concession. Pag sinabi natin concession, anong ibig sabihin? Concession, wala sa original na plano, subalit pinahintulutan. Wala sa original na kalooban ng Diyos, pero pinahintulutan na lang ni Moises. Ang sagot ni Jesus, because of the hardness of your hearts. Because of the hardness of your hearts. Para mas maintindihan ng mga kabataan siguro, kasi marupok kayo eh. Marupok ang tao. Kaya nagkakaroon ng hiwalayan, nagkakaroon ng diborsyo. Ang tema po ng diborsyo ay mainit na tema dito sa Pilipinas. Siguro nga, yung Vatican na lang tsaka Pilipinas, yung walang bill of divorce o walang batas tungkol sa diborsyo dito sa buong mundo. Ngayon, may tatanong natin, mababago ba ito? Hindi natin alam, hindi natin masasagot. Siguro sa mga darating na panahon, pwedeng magbago ang posisyon ng gobyerno at ipasa ang diborsyo sa Pilipinas. Pero kahit ipasa ang diborsyo sa Pilipinas, alam niyo po, ang simbahan hindi mababago yung kanyang posisyon. Magalit na ang gustong magalit, pero ang simbahan, hindi mababago yung kanyang posisyon. Kasi ang simbahan, hindi siya sunod sa Agos. Ang simbahan, hindi sugo, sunod sa Agos. Yung ating pananampalataya, hindi sumusunod kung ano yung bago, kung ano yung uso. Totoo, ang simbahan, nakikibagay sa panahon ang simbahan, nire-respeto ang mga bagong kaisipan, mga bagong kaalaman, pero hindi nayayakap lahat ng bago. Kasi kung ano man yung bago sa ating panahon ngayon, maluluma rin yan. Pero ang simbahan at ang ating pananampalataya, mananatili. Ang simbahan kasi, 
hangad niya na maabot ang isang maayos na resolusyon. Yung diborsyo kasi, uh, open for abuse din siya. May magandang naidudulot, halimbawa sa konteksto ng isang mag-asawa na merong nangyayaring pang-aabuso sa loob ng tahanan, sinasaktan yung isang partner, yung isang asawa. So, talaga namang mabuti yung maidudulot kasi hindi na siya mapipilitan na umuwi doon sa bahay kung siya ay sinasaktan. Pero ang simbahan hindi basta-basta pumapayag kasi nga ito ay open for uh, abuse. Pwedeng uh, meron lang hindi nagustuhan sa kanyang asawa, maghihiwalay na kaagad. O kaya baka naman iba yung kanyang motibasyon. Gusto lang magkaroon ng pera, masarap na buhay, etc. Ang hangad ng simbahan po sa inyong, mga, sa inyong buhay mag-asawa, kung meron mang alitan, hindi po yan maiwasan sa mag-asawa man, sa magkaibigan, sa magkakamag-anak. Lagi magkakaroon ng alitan. Pero hangad ng simbahan na maabot ang isang maayos na resolusyon. Ang atin pong ibig sabihin dito, hindi pakikipaghiwalay agad ang solusyon. Kung hindi, baka pwede namang makipagkasundo, makipag-ayos. Kasi misan, kaya hindi nagkakasundo sa isang relasyon, hindi nag-uusap, kulang sa dialogue, kulang sa communication. At dahil doon, nawawalan din ng respeto. Kailangan magkaroon tayo ng dialogo. Pag-usapan ang problema, ayusin ang buhay mag-asawa. Lalong-lalo na isa alang-alang ang mga anak. Yun ang importante. Kasi kapag naghihiwalay ang isang lalaki at ang isang babae, ang pinaka naapektuhan po talaga yung mga bata, yung mga anak. So, bago natin yeah, sumuong dito sa isang uh, resolusyon ng paghihiwalay, hindi na pagbabalikan, isa lang-alang yung mga bata, yung mga anak. Ang simbahan, merong sariling proseso, yung ating tinatawag na annulment. Pinapawalang bisa yung kasal. Bakit kailangan pa father ng annulment? Di ba pwedeng divorce na lang? Hindi, hindi ganun kadali yon. Kasi pinili nyo yan eh. Nagpakasal kayo sa simbahan, pumasok kayo sa pintuan ng simbahan, tapos gusto niyang lumabas sa ibang pintuan na mas madali, hindi pwede. Kung pumasok kayo sa pintuan ng simbahan, eh di lumabas din sa pintuan ng simbahan. May sariling proseso tayong kailangan pagdaanan. Pero muli, kailangan isa alang-alang. Ano ba yung nangyayari sa inyong buhay mag-asawa? Kamusta ang inyong pamilya? Kamusta yung inyong mga anak? Marami tayong factors na kailangan isa alang-alang. Ang, ang kasal po, ang kasal, hindi lang yan isang legal bond na basta-basta mabubuwag ng batas sa korte. Ang kasal, hindi lang isang kontrata na pwedeng ipagpasawalang bisa o ipagpasawalang bahala kapag ayaw na nung isang party. Sapagkat ang kasal sa simbahan ay isang sakramento. Yun yung madalas nating nakakalimutan. Marriage is a sacrament. Ang kasal ay isang sakramento. May basbas, hindi lamang ni Father, hindi lamang ng simbahan, kundi basbas mismo ng Diyos. At bilang blessing ng Diyos atin, kailangan nating igalang, kailangan nating pagtrabahuhan para maging maayos ang ating pagsasama. Kaya po, sa mga ating mga viewers din, mga nagsisimba sa atin, na nagpaplanong magpakasal, lalong-lalong na ngayong panahon na to, kahit mayroong pandemic, bago po tayo sumuong sa buhay pag-aasawa, ating pag-isipang mabuti, pagnilayang mabuti, kilatising maigi ang ating mapapangasawa. Tanungin ang sarili, bakit gusto kong mag-asawa? Ano ang aking motibasyon? Ano ang kanyang motibasyon? Hindi pwede dito yung tanong na mahal mo o mahal ka. Kasi hindi yun pwede kasi kailangan mahal niyo yung isa't isa. Hindi lang isa yung nagmamahal. Hindi rin man pwede yung love at first sight lang. Hindi, hindi yun magtatagal. Kailangan we must move from the initial attraction to commitment. Because only commitments last. Yung initial attraction, yung love of first sight, nawawala po yan kasi dumarating ang panahon na hindi na tayo attractive. Paano kung hindi na tayo attractive sa isa't isa? Maghihiwalay na lang basta. Hindi po. Kailangan from initial attraction to commitment. Kaya nga totoo yung sinasabi sa atin ng mga nakatatanda sa atin. 
ang buhay pag-aasawa, hindi yan parang kanin na isusubo mo, na kapag ikaw ay napaso, basta-basta mo na lamang iluluwa. Hindi, kasi meron tayong obligasyon sa isa't isa. Obligasyon ng mag-asawa, obligasyon ng magulang sa kanyang mga anak. Gusto ko pong uh, tuldukan itong pagninilay na ito sa pamamagitan ng sinabi ni Mother Teresa. Sabi niya, For love to be real, it must cost, it must hurt, it must empty us of self. Kasi ang tunay na pag-ibig, kailangan niya ng effort at sacrifice. Kung walang effort at sacrifice ang isang pagsasama, hindi yan wagas at hindi rin yan magtatagal. Ang pag-ibig sa atin ng Diyos, merong effort, merong sacrifice. At yung pag-ibig niya sa atin, ang ating model sa ating relasyon sa bawat isa. Amen. Jesus thought that the relationship between man and wife should reflect the original plan of God, that this be joined together and not be separated. Let us pray that love in marriage and in the family may be strengthened. For every petition, let us say, Lord, protect marriage and family life. Lord, protect marriage and family life. that married couples may see that the sacrament of marriage is not a social convention or merely an outward sign of commitment, but a gift for the sanctification and salvation of spouses. We pray. Lord, Lord protect marriage and family life. That the people of God may see the indissolu indissolubility of marriage as affirmed by the church not as a yoke imposed on humanity, but as, as a gift granted to those joined in marriage, we pray. Lord, protect marriage and family life. That couples may face crises and hardships in marriage and family life without fleeing from the challenges or concealing problems, we pray. Lord, protect marriage and family life that couples who contemplate separation or divorce think of those who are most vulnerable in the crisis, the children who suffer in silence and feel an immense psychological burden, we pray. Lord, protect marriage and family life. May the Lord replace the hardness of our hearts with true love that is patient, kind, not jealous, and bears all things, we pray. Lord, protect marriage and family life. Heavenly Father, make us mindful of the sacredness and inviolability of the family and its beauty in your plan. May families turn to the Holy Family of Nazareth for succor and as a model of communion and prayer. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us 
that with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Uh, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Prayer during Communion For those who cannot receive communion, join us in praying the spiritual communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me, I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart. Detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, I love you above all things because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen. Communion Antiphon, O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord who gives you your fill of finest wheat. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Horatio Imperata, merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with the love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, 
restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your hiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strengthen their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health, protect those who care for them, grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to the conversion and holiness. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever, God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Blessed James Alberione, pray for us. Blessed Timothy Jacardo, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you for celebrating the Eucharist with us. God bless you all. Now we invite you to pray our devotional prayers. Invocations to Jesus, Master. Jesus, Master, sanctify my mind. Teaching in the church, draw everyone to your school. Jesus, Master, deliver me from error, from vain thoughts, and from eternal darkness. Jesus, I offer you all an awake. Jesus, way of sanctity, make me your faithful imitator. Jesus, way, render me perfect as the Father who is in heaven. Jesus, life, live in me so that I may live in you. Jesus, life, do not permit me to separate myself from you. Jesus, life, grant that I may live eternally in the joy of your love. Jesus, truth, may I be light for the world. May I be example and model for souls. Jesus, life, may my presence bring grace and consolation everywhere. Prayer to the Sacred Heart Divine Master, I thank and bless your most lovable heart, the great gift of the Holy Eucharist. Your love makes you dwell in the Holy Tabernacle. Renew your passion in the Mass and give yourself as food for our souls in Holy Communion. May I know you, hidden God. May I draw salutary waters from the font of your heart. Grant me the grace to visit you every day in this sacrament, to understand and actively participate in Holy Mass, to receive Holy Communion often with faith and love. Sweetheart of my Jesus, make me love you more and more. Saint Joseph, we venerate you as the model of laborers, the friend of the poor, the consoler of the afflicted, and those forced to leave their own land, the saint of divine providence. On earth, you represented the universal goodness and concern of the Heavenly Father. You were the carpenter of Nazareth and work teacher to the Son of God, who became a humble laborer for us. Assist with your prayers 
all who labor in intellectual, moral, and material work. For the nations obtain legislation inspired by the gospel, the spirit of Christian charity, a way of governing in accord with justice and peace. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us.